And we told you about that interaction Kojo Yangson had with Professor Kwame Nahoy, one time minister for local government and rural development. But it's also because not only he teaches in academia, but his immense wealth of knowledge when it comes to the current setup of our local governance structure that we have. And um, I think all of us will need to watch and get some lessons. You know. What do you say to those who suggest that it was largely designed to protect Rawlings from prosecution and international, you know, um, well, vilification following handover? No, there was, there's only an aspect that that criticism is made in relation, that's in relation to the indemnity clauses in the transitional provisions of the Constitution. And there's an explanation for that. When people stage coup d'etat. They know that they have committed the crime of treason for which the punishment is death. Therefore, if you want those people to hand over smoothly, you have to give them guarantees that they will not be molested, they will not be vilified, they will not even be tried and maybe sentenced to death if they should hand over. Because they, 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 they will not accept to commit suicide, mm. which is what they will be doing if they simply say, okay, we are handing over. Mm. So any time a coup has taken place in any country, negotiations take place for guarantees of indemnity and immunity to be provided the coup makers. That is the only way they will feel comfortable enough to agree to hand over. And that, those were the provisions that were inserted in the transitional provisions of the Constitution that people criticize. I know mm. people criticize it a, a lot. Mm. But when they criticize it, their target is Rawlings. Mm. But Rawlings is only one. The treason charge extends to those of us who also worked with him. So if the indemnity clauses are removed, not only Rawlings will be tried, I will be tried. President Kufu will be tried. Because in fact, he was appointed PNDC secretary for local government before I was appointed a PNDC secretary. Yeah. So if we go in line to be tried, he will come before, before me. Not only that, the coup makers of 72 will be tried. The coup makers of 66, those of them who are alive, mm. will also be tried. And then there will be a lot of confusion. There will be political instability, etc. Mm. So whilst it may not be the best legal formula, it is a, the best political formula. It's a matter of political pragmatism. Mm. Because if you don't do that, then you have to fight the coup makers in order to get them to hand over power. Mm. Does it not go beyond that, though? I mean, is it not also criticized for the fact that it gives perhaps too much power to our presidents? No, I, I agree that it gives too much power to the presidency. But that is how the Constitution was designed. Remember, the original proposals from the Committee of Experts Constitution, chaired by Nana Dr. S. K. B. Asante. They recommended the French kind of formula, a president and a prime minister kind of formula, the kind that we had in 1969, so that there, 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 there will be a split executive between the president and the prime minister. That was rejected by the consul consultative assembly, and they went in for the uh, presidential thing. The problem with the powers that they have given the president is that he's, he's, he's virtually unchallengeable. I mean, he's, he's responsible for virtually everything in the country. And that is, I think, is what is wrong. So if, you, if we had gone along with the recommendations of the Professor Fiajo Constitutional Review Commission, you see that they made some recommendations that would have reduced you know the power of the of the of the of the of the of the, of the president. Mm. The, the their report was issued. Professor Mills issued a white paper, but it has not been implemented yet. Mm. You know, President Mahama went a long way towards implementing it. In fact, he submitted the constitutional amendment uh, bills, two of them, entrenched clauses and non-entrenched clauses, to Parliament. Mm. But they didn't have time to do it before 
you know, the NDC lost power. Mm -hmm. So it is one of the unfinished businesses of democracy that another government may have to take a, a look at. Let's see if we can inch closer to the modern state of the NDC. Uh, following uh, Rawlings, you and, and a lot of your colleagues put your strength behind uh, Professor Atta Mills, who then became president. Now, if you ask Rawlings today, one of the reasons he will give for his disagreements with the late Professor Mills is that he expected the late professor to prosecute a lot of the people in the, <coughs> N the NPP government when he took over in 1999. No, 2009. Uh, to, uh, sorry, in 2009, thank you. In 2009. Is there any truth to that? Yes, and in that, a lot of our people agree with the Rollins. Uh, even I agree with him to a large extent um, because if you look, look at how the NPP is treating the NDC today, since they came to power in 2017, and you are an NDC member, you begin to ask yourself, why was nothing done to the NPP members when the NDC came to power in 2009? And I have the answer, because I was directly in charge of, 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 of what could have been done, PVOB and I, in charge of the transition team. We built criminal dockets against more than 100 NPP appointees. We had planned for a five-part series of press conferences to be addressed by Alex Sigbifia, who later became Deputy Chief of Staff and later mm -hmm. Minister of Health. Health. We had to go and seek President Mills' approval to proceed. I went to him with a brief and everything. After I had finished, he sat back, looked at me and said, we spoke Fanti, come now. So you want us to do it to them. When they, when they come back, then they will do it to us. When we come, then we do it to them. Then it will be two in and four in. Uh, then did Ghana go or did Ghana come? Come now, me here. Meaning come now, I won't do it. That is how the MPP got away with, quote and unquote, murder. Today they get up and say that if they had done anything wrong, we would have prosecuted them. They don't know that we had a president who said he was an Assemblean and that he was prepared to, forgive, to forget the past in order that we move forward. Many people in the NDC were very, very disappointed. And their disappointment is reflected in Rollins' anger with President Mills. That even if he had done a quarter of what we think a politician sh should have done, maybe, maybe the, uh, today's reaction of the MPP would have been different. Mm -hmm. But because they got away with it, they think that it's business as usual and so they can, they mm -hmm. can continue. But I must tell you, President Mills, you know, that's why some people say, said that he, 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 was, he, was not, he was not born he was not a born politician. He had no business in politics. Because he didn't have that you know, cutting edge. You know, because in politics, you don't always have to be good. Mills was good, so he assumed that every human being was good. But in politics, they are very bad people. And when you encounter the bad people, you have to deal with them. But because he couldn't see how a human being could be bad, it was very difficult for him to deal with bad people. Hmm. Now, you threw your weight behind him. Um, but when he died, God rest his soul, did you throw your weight behind Mahama? Yes, indeed. In, in President Mills' biography, which, I, which will be, we will launch next year, which I wrote with Koko Inido, we will see exactly the role that we, we, uh, I played and others also, 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 also played. Literally, we were the one who, you know, made it possible for the transition from Mills to Mahama to take place so, 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 so easily. Um, we have to do a lot of things to ensure that um, you may want to talk to the Speaker of Parliament at the time, uh, Mrs. Justice, the lady, that was the name, something, and also mm -hmm. the Chief Justice at the time, Mrs. Um, 
Uh, who, who left before Sofia Kufu took over? Oh, yes, um, uh, Wood. We are the yes. Wood. You know, we worked with them on the day that Mel's died, you know, and we had to do a lot of work to make it possible for Mahama to be sworn in in the night of 24th of 24th July. Mm -hmm. So, yes, we threw our weight behind him. Um, do you think he was a good president? Um, he could have been a good president, and he will be a good president from 2021, because I believe that he has learned some lessons from some of the mistakes that he made. You know, I think that the biggest mistake he made at the beginning of his presidency, not when he was fresh, finishing off President Mills' time, but at the beginning of his presidency, was to surround himself with people who were not core NDC members. You know, his special advisor or whatever was not, his secretary was not, his secretary to the cabinet was not, his, you know, so many of them. And, and so there was a divorce between the government and the party. And therefore, it was not very easy for the party's program to be implemented. To a large extent, it was a program of the bureaucracy that was being implemented and not the, and not the program of the, of the party. Mm -hmm. But I think halfway through, he realized the problem and so he changed course. And that's when he brought in Julius Debra as his chief of staff. Um, he, he brought in Upori um, uh, what was his name? The one, the deputy something at the AU now. Um, oh, um, Koti. Yes. Yeah, as a secretary. I mean, yes. he changed mm. his changes. He changed his immediately because mm. he realized the problem that had been that had been uh, created. Mm. And I think that since we came into position, he has been working with the party people very, very closely. Mm. And that's why I think that he will be a very successful president. But even in the, in, 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 you know, in, in, in his in his presidency, I think that he did very well in terms of development especially. His development ex agenda was uh, excellent, mm. but I think it was his handling of the party that created problems for him. The current ticket, John and Jane. <laughs> there are those who say that this is really your, your orchestration. <laughs> no, it is not my orchestration. Uh, <laughs> There's a pause Jane. there. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's because I have known Jane for a long time. Uh, we are actually age mates. We were both born in 1951. I'm only one month ahead of her. I was born in October. She was born in November. We entered secondary school together. We left together. I have known her for a long time. In 1996, I was the one who brought her from Cape Coast University to come and interview the, the President Rollins on Radio Gold. Mm. We have been very close uh, together. Mm. But she was President Mahama's education minister. She was not my education minister. So <laughs> if anybody <laughs> should be a better judge of her as a politician, it should be mm. President Mahama. It's not me. I think that it's, it was, it's, 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 it, she's President Mahama's choice. Um, it is not time yet. Otherwise, I would ex reveal to you what I did and who my preferred choice was for the number two, for the run, uh, running mate position. It wasn't and, Jane? No, it wasn't Jane. I, but the moment she was announced, I accepted her because I know she's very good material. And we are also, you know, Charting a new course, we are breaking the glass ceiling, as they, as they, as they say. And you can see the confusion that it has caused in the opposition, where in the go government party camp, because uh, I think this was the last thing that they imagined would, would happen. But I think that it is a brilliant ticket. Um, Nana is a lady of steel, you know. Um, you don't run a big university like Cape Coast University with all these professors, a medical school, a law faculty, a this and all of that. I mean, it takes grits to be able to you know, manage an institution. It's not even an institution, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a city, it's a secondary city, because the population of Cape Coast University is bigger than most of the secondary cities that we have in Ghana. So she has managerial acumen, and I think she has performed well, and she deserves it. Mm. It's a good ticket. I recommend it to Ghanaians. Mm. Now, this is how I'd like us to end. It has been believed for the longest time, and I said it at the beginning, that you are the shadow puppet master of the NDC. That in reality, 
The party is run from Church Street, where your offices are. Tell us today, is this true? No, it's not true. Actually, my office is not in Church Street. My office is at a place near the European Union office. We call it the Center for Democratic Transitions. But I go to Church Street because Church Street is the office of Atwahoy and the Kwame Paper. Mm. They are the ones who are there. And a lot of the unemployed NDC politicians, they gravitate towards the, you know, to go and discuss national issues, etc., etc. So um, I will say that it is, it is, it is a, it is a it is that the party is run from there. Of course, the people there have influence, you know, and, 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 and so they are consulted when issues come up. But then the, the flag bearer himself also has his office at Tentaments, you know, where you see a lot of NDC bigwigs also, also congregating. Uh, people say that President Rollins' office and resident at Ridge is also a powerhouse, you know, and uh, so... Um, but they can't all be, No, right? uh, uh, Oh, they can all be. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> after all, politics is a matter of consultation. Mm. Don't, don't, didn't you realize that when uh, President Mahama was introducing Nana, he said, oh, he had consulted the founder at the Ridge, he had consulted the Council of Elders, he had consulted the FEC, he had consulted the NEC, he consulted all of these. Of course, there are there are informal consultations that take place also. Maybe he consulted me, but he cannot announce that I consulted Kwam Nahoy. Who am I? I don't have a position in the party. So even if he consulted me, you wouldn't know. But there is also a lot of informal consultations that go on, including chiefs. Some of the chiefs, the country's big chiefs, they are also consulted, not just by NDC, by both parties, when some of these you know, um, uh, appointments have to be made. Mm -hmm. So there was, there has been very wide consultation. But it is not true. I have influence in the party. That is true. I have a lot of influence in the party because of the role I played from the one of the revolution. But it is not the kind of influence that will make me the master puppeteer, no. Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell our audience why working with Rawlings is essential reading? I have stated in the blurb of the book that Rawlings is an enigma. He is not the ordinary run of the mill leader or president. His style is different. His leadership is different. And therefore, when you have the opportunity to work with a personality like that, you gain experiences that are worth you know, following by others who will come after you. So for me, it was always important to me that I would document my experiences with Rollins. Now, one of his character traits that I admired, and I've given about two examples in the book, for example, was his human relations. And the, 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 the two examples, I don't know if we have time, I'll, oh, I'll, I'll summarize two of them. You know, when he did something that upset me and I resigned, I actually took my letter of resignation to him. I put my letter of resignation on the notice board. He didn't mind me. When I got home in the evening, my wife, and the children, then they were young, I think eight, six, and four. They were in the most ebullient of moods. They came running towards me. They were happy. Why? They said, well, President Rollins had sent word that the next day I should bring them to the castle. He wants to fly us around the country. <laughs> so, the, of course, I, I, my family was happy. How could I kill their <laughs> happiness by saying, we are not going because I have resigned? So the next morning, I took them. He had this small 14-seater uh, Defender aircraft. He put us in it. He piloted it himself with a, uh, his flight engineer by his side. Three hours we were in the air. When we came back, he drove us back to the castle. He served them breakfast. And I was, I was just amazed. I didn't see him. I had packed my things from the office. The next day, nobody told me to go back to the office. I went back to the office, I took my things to the office, and I continued serving. I had put a notice of my resignation on the notice board. I took it off and put one line that I have rescinded my decision to resign. <laughs> you know, that was his way of telling me I am sorry 
without having to utter those words. Because as a military man, you, can, you should never say you are sorry to your subordinate. It doesn't, it doesn't happen. But I admired the way that he, you know, I, I mean, I mean he, he worked around me in a way that was really, I said, this man, it was a psychological battle of wills, and clearly he won, you know. And that was his, it came to him naturally, you know, how he handled uh, human, human, human beings. His human relations was really, were really excellent. And when you work with a, a person like that, I like him more after that uh, incident because my family didn't stop talking about it for the next two or three months, you know. And everybody in their school got to hear that Rollins had taken them on a flight. Good for the family. Wow. So uh, experiences like that needed to be documented so that future heads of state, future ministers, etc., would see that in being in leadership position does not mean always cracking the whip. Sometimes there's a certain human approach to relationships that work even better mm. than cracking the whip. Do you think this book will bring you two back together? Um, if it's a big, if Rollins reads it, it can bring us together. My fear, however, is that he may not read it. Some people will read it and go and misrepresent the contents to him. I'm saying this because it has happened once before, and Nana Todazi and I had to come out. You know, this business of some abacha money, etc. Yeah. He gave an interview to a Nigerian newspaper that two of his colleagues went and wrote a book on decentralization and said that, you know, he had taken money from Abacha, etc. So we came out with a press statement that, no, the book we wrote, the two of us co-authored, was about Justice Anna. It had nothing to do with decentralization. And in fact, what we said about the Abacha money was so positive. What we said was that the MPP tried to bring it up in parliament for debate, and Justice Anna worked things in such a way that they could never bring it up for debate. That was all we said in the book about the Abacha money. So we knew, for example, that he had not read it, but somebody had misrepresented, because the Abacha, the, the Justice Anna book and my decentralization book were both launched in 2010, very close to each other. Mm. Yes, and somebody obviously mixed it up and went in. So what I'm saying is that if he reads it himself, it can bring us together. Do you know the truth about the Abacha money? Yes, I know. I didn't know about <coughs> Rowling saying that he took only two, the money was two million, etc. I didn't know about that, but mm -hmm. I, I do know that some money came from Abacha through his uh, security. To Rawlings? Uh, well, to the government. I don't know whether to Rawlings or to the government. Well, did the government take receipt of it? or did It, I, I, it didn't come to me, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> you know so you're the, a member of government. Yes, well, but I mean, when, when, when when we sign a loan agreement and it comes, you can't ask the Minister of Youth and Sports to confirm that the money came. He doesn't handle it. He's the Minister of Finance. So in my position as Minister of Local Government, I wasn't handling money. So you don't know where the money went? No, I know that the money came. I don't know where it went. Hmm. Professor Ahoy, this has been fascinating. Uh, I wish we could go on uh, for longer. In fact, I wish you hadn't written this book in the year 2020 where COVID-19 exists because I would have loved to shake your hand. Yeah. But we'll save that for a better day, a better year. Very good. Thank you so much. Can I just say something about where this can be purchased? Please do. After, after, after the launch. Yes. After the launch, you can get it Kingdom Bookshop Legon, EPP Bookshop Labadi, Bachona Total Filling Station, Citrus Bookshop ANC Mall, Kingdom Bookshop Usu, Vidya Bookshop Usu, Airport City Shell Filling Station, my own office, CDT, Ghana, is near the European Commission, European Union, Union office, opposite Aquinas Secondary School. Mm -hmm. Then EPP Bookshop Legon. Then the publishers also sell it online, www.digibookspublishing.com. And then the Holiday Inn Hotel shop at the airport city. When is the launch? Thursday. Thursday. Yes. We'll all be there. Okay. Thank, thank you very you so much. much. It's been a pleasure. And thank you all for coming. Thank you for watching.
Well, forget about your political persuasion. Uh, knowledge is knowledge. And if you can get access to that book, which I will, just like Kojo Yangtze said he will, uh, it will be a great storehouse of knowledge for all of us to tap into. That was a great interaction. Kojo Yangtze, host of the Super Morning Show, and uh, hel ha helping us with that interaction, Professor Kwame Ahoy, great man of experience and intellectual capacity. But moving on, we have to bring you the latest entertainment highlight with Kadi. But before we do that, let me run this by you. Golden Finger Industries Limited is a fast-growing manufacturing company processing fruit into quality organic cosmetic product, cleaning and disinfectant, produced right here in Ghana under certified FDA conditions. Now, they do have in stock GF hand sanitizers, GF rubbing alcohol, uh, GF uh, gentle uh, antiseptic, GF multi-purpose liquid soap, GF hand washing soap, GF antiseptic cleaner and GF multi-purpose glass cleaners. Now they are located at Giselle Estate, SEC, DVLA, right on the uh, Wager Road. And you can contact them on 054-6274-070 or 054-6273-990. They have a reliable landline and it is 0302-957950. Well, we have to take a break. When we come back, we'll bring you the latest showbiz.